Welcome to the 10-Minute Treasurer. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And if you're watching this, my bet is that your church has recently voted to leave the United Methodist denomination, or you're at least working in that direction. And you want to know more about what kind of work is ahead of us. What all do we have to do, the legal and all that other kind of stuff that you have to think of to leave the denomination you've been part of for so long. And that's what we're going to dive into. By the way, my qualifications, I'm currently an advisor for the Dakotas, Minnesota area of the Global Methodist Denomination. And I'm a former conference treasurer. So hopefully I know what I'm talking about. So we're just going to follow this very simple timeline. So we're going to start off at that special charge conference where your church votes to disaffiliate. What has to happen there and what has to happen before we get to the annual conference vote to approve your disaffiliation. And then there's a time after that before the church actually leaves the United Methodist denomination. The last date that your church would be United Methodist is the disaffiliation date. And that's kind of like the closing date on a house or on a piece of real estate. So that's the last date that your church is United Methodist, the first date that your church will be Global Methodist. And let's go ahead and start looking at it. At the special charge conference, that is when your church will vote to disaffiliate from the United Methodist denomination. And assuming that vote goes through and your church intends to join the Global Methodist denomination, your church should immediately have a second vote. And the second vote would be to join the Global Methodist denomination. I'm going to put a link in the description with some sample language for that resolution because you're going to need that resolution or a copy of the minutes uh, showing the vote. And that'll have to be printed off and signed by the secretary and the chairperson and then forwarded off to the Global Methodist denomination. And that'll get you formally in the books and approved to be part of the Global Methodist denomination. By the way, when you send it in, you could also post date it and say, you know, if you know that your church is going to um, leave, your last day as United Methodist might be December 31st, 2022. You could say, we want this effective to be part of the Global Methodist denomination on January 1, 2023. And that would be perfectly fine. I kind of wish that we could just jump right ahead to annual conference approval from our special charge conference vote, but you can't because there's still quite a bit to do. And I just call this our time of preparation. There's some uh, legal work to be done, but there's also some fun work. One of the fun things is choosing a new name. Uh, and it's been exciting as churches have been choosing their new name. They haven't done this in 50 years, so we're hearing some really creative and inspiring names. And one of the things you need to do, though, is check with the Secretary of State website. So I'm going to link to the North Dakota, South Dakota, and Minnesota Secretary of State. So that way you could double check that your name's not taken. And if it is taken, you could just tack on your town name at the very end. So that's why you see so many First United Methodist Church of uh, Fargo and Sioux Falls and so forth. So... That's the fun part. Now for the less fun part, you need to work with the conference. I'm not saying the conference isn't fun to work with, but you need to work on the disaffiliation agreement. And that is the formal agreement between the conference and the church. And uh, I think there's a template out there for the Dakotas. And if I have it, I will copy it. And yours for Minnesota would probably look very similar as well. Uh, one of the the big things is that that agreement will have your amounts that you need to make sure you're prepared to pay by the disaffiliation date. Um, the other thing that there, there is, is there's some branding restrictions. So just to make sure you know this, you can use the United Methodist hymnal because they don't sell them exclusive, exclusively to United Methodists. So this is something that anybody could buy if they wanted to. So that should be exempt. And also the one that's a little bit trickier is some of our buildings, they might have the logo integrated into the architecture. So for example, if you have a stained glass window with a cross and flame in there, work with the conference, they will most likely uh, grant an exception for most of these. Uh, they've been good to work with, so I don't anticipate this being a big problem, but just make sure you're on the same page with any of that branding and signage types of things. 
the next one is, and you'll see this in the disaffiliation agreement, is that the the church entity, if it's incorporated, you need to close it and then start a brand new a nonprofit corporation. So if your church is not incorporated, that's a different thing. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to incorporate. I think it's a good thing and for a lot of different reasons, mostly because I understand it better. Um, but there's other legal reasons why it makes a lot of sense as well. So if your church is incorporated, and by the way, you could also look that up on the Secretary of State website with those links I showed you. And um, your trustees should make a resolution to dissolve. And I'm gonna put a link to a template I have for that resolution because what you wanna do is uh, the trustees vote and tr you wanna name the new church. So when you have a new name, name the new church as the successor. And that way they will inherit all your assets and all your debts as well. But also when they're named as a successor, let's just say somebody has a bequest hanging out there and they didn't update their will. Somebody, a lawyer that looks at that, uh, tries to look it up, they'll look up and say, hey, there's First United Methodist Church. Oh, and they dissolved and it says their successor is whatever <laughs> your new name is. So that's why you do that. So you're gonna have to have the trustees approve a resolution to, to dissolve. And I have a template. And this is where it would be helpful, by the way, to get a lawyer. And I'm going to put a link to a lawyer here um, at the very end of this one slide. But uh, you, you'll have to prepare articles of incorporation and articles of dissolution. I could find the articles of dissolution and incorporation for South Dakota, but it looks like for North Dakota, you might have to log into your system if you want to um, dissolve your corporation. That's what it looked like to me. So, and I didn't check on Minnesota. I'm not as familiar with Minnesota. I'm sorry. So that's uh, that's something you'll have to work through and get that prepared as well. And I'll I'll throw out a couple of templates for the articles of incorporation that that they might be helpful to you. And then also you're going to have to prepare the deeds. So whether you're incorporating for the first time or you are closing your old church corporation and starting a new one, you should prepare some deeds to get all your property under the correct name. I think a quick claim deed would work. And again, I'm gonna highly encourage you to seek some legal advice. And this, um, this is uh, Bance, Gosh and Kramer. They're from Aberdeen. They can work in both North Dakota and South Dakota. And if I find somebody from Minnesota, I will also put a link there, but I'm gonna put a link to them in the description as well. And if I can, I might even try to link it up above me. I, I've seen other YouTubers do that and I'll see if I can do it as well. All right, that brings us to the annual conference approval. So this might be a special session, this might be a regular session. And the key thing you need to know is that your clergy member and lay member, they should be in attendance and they should vote and they should represent well. I don't know how else to say it, but um, prepare yourself because there there will be some people that are gonna be very upset by this. And they may say some stuff that um, you're not gonna like hearing. So, and I, and I just wanna pray for us if you wouldn't mind. Father God, I lift up those, and especially the global Methodists that are going to go there, or I guess future global Methodists, that their conduct, their words would be pleasing to you and bring glory to your name. In Christ's holy name I pray, amen. So between the time when annual conference approves your disaffiliation agreement and the actual closing date, which is the disaffiliation date, there's still more work to be done. So this is our final preparation time. And here's the, the work that needs to be done. You need to, to file that Secretary of State uh, paperwork. That's that Articles of Incorporation, which I probably file first. And then also the, the Articles of Dissolution, which should have that resolution from the trustees. Um, if you can file that, there might, I can't remember if you can post date that or if you can pick an end date. If you can, you can file that right away. Otherwise, you might want to wait on filing that. 
Um, you're also going to want to um, get a new tax ID, a new EIN. I'll put a link to that. It's the form SS4, but most of the time you just do it online and it's pretty much automatic. So this is for your payroll purposes. And oh, by the way, uh, speaking of tax things, churches, I'm going to put a link to this because it's so misunderstood. Churches are automatically considered a 501c3. So for charitable tax purposes, they're automatically considered a 501c3 by the IRS. So I'll put a link to that as well because that's so misunderstood. Another thing is when you do your final 941. So that's when you report quarterly uh, the taxable income from anybody that's employed at the church. So usually it's a pastor and maybe some lay employees. There is a line, it's line 17. And you click that or mark that box and you just say, here's the last date that we paid our employees. And that's just telling you them that this is the last time you're going to file that. And then later on, after you do all your W-2s and 1099s and that kind of stuff, you write to the IRS and I'll put a link to this as well to let them know that they can cancel your tax ID. So another thing to do is you probably need a new web address. And so uh, claiming that web address would be ideal and figuring out your emails and having people work on that. And also getting ready to file those deeds at just about the, the last date of, so the date of disaffiliation as well as getting that payment ready for the conference. Uh, these might be able to go in a couple days early, but you probably wanna wait till almost that very last date for, the, for those two items. Some other stuff to think about. Um, I think about getting the records ready for the conference. So there's a, in the disaffiliation agreement, the conference gets the original historical records. So you should make some copies for yourself and, uh, but whatever, work with the conference so that they're available. So you might not be bringing them to Mitchell, but you might be um, handing them over to a DS or maybe to a church that's planning on staying United Methodist. So just make sure you work that out so those are cared for. Um, changing and removing signage. So you're going to be working on all, it's, you know, there'll be probably some signs around town, there, but there'll be a sign in front of your church and other, other types of things. So you're going to have to care for all that. And the last one, I think, maybe there's one more after this, but I, I think of all this working with your bank to, to get that updated. Uh, making sure you're notifying uh, vendors and updating Facebook, updating Google, all that good stuff. There's probably a lot of stuff and this will continue on, but um, especially your banking is probably the most important one. And I just have a couple last items that I didn't know what to do with, but there's some other concerns. First of all, you're likely gonna be on your own for a charge conference this year and just do it as an all church meeting. You know, just uh, kind of like a charge conference, but an all church meeting. And what you're gonna to wanna to do at there is you're gonna to wanna to approve the budget. You're gonna to wanna to approve the cat pastor's uh, cash housing allowance or designated housing exclusion. You're gonna to wanna to approve the leadership that are gonna be serving. Um, those are probably the big ones. I'm gonna put a clergy comp form in also linked um, in there. It'll be in there as well. Um, so good luck finding everything. There'll be a lot of links, but um, hopefully this is a good resource. All right, that brings us to the end of the video. And I know this sounded like a lot of work. I know this sounds like zero fun, but you can do it. And there's people that'll help you. I lifted up that one law firm, but there's others that are walking along beside you. If you haven't joined um, some of the Facebook groups, those are a tremendous source of help. There's other people that are willing to also help you like myself. So you're not alone. You can do this. The work is worth it. God bless you till next time.